When discussing the scale of the universe, we're immediately faced with an intriguing question. Are we tiny beings, or is the cosmos itself immeasurable? In fact, the universe is so vast that special units of measurement had to be created just to quantify the distances between celestial bodies. Today, in the space world, we learn that even reaching the nearest planet within our solar system can take months, or even years. And even in this immense cosmic desert, our Earth appears as nothing more than a tiny grain of sand. If you enjoy this topic, please subscribe to our channel and hit that like button. We begin this video by asking, how long would it take to reach planets other than Earth? Every creature, whether we love them or even despise them, starts its journey on the small blue sphere that floats in the vast, dark ocean of the universe. Although Earth is our only known home, our insatiable desire to explore and venture beyond its borders drives us forward. Humanity has only taken its first cautious steps in exploring nearby space. So far, our achievements have been limited to the historic moon landing and the meticulous planning for a future mission to Mars. We firmly believe that one day these journeys will no longer be extraordinary events. However, venturing beyond the Milky Way remains unfeasible for now due to its immense vastness. To better grasp the true scale of the universe, let's start with our own solar system. The Moon, Earth's closest satellite, is about 385,000 kilometers away. If you were to drive a car at 100 kilometers per hour nonstop toward it, the trip would take roughly 160 days. This is long before spacecraft existed. In fact, spacecraft weren't invented solely to traverse space. The first manned moon mission in 1969 lasted over three days and nights. Even with modern rockets, covering that distance takes a similar amount of time. While a three-day flight might not sound too long, it's important to remember that on a cosmic scale, the moon is relatively near. Now, imagine that Elon Musk has finally developed an ultra-advanced spacecraft and is planning an expedition to Mars. Because Mars's orbit around the sun is elliptical, the distance between Earth and the red planet varies. When the two are closest, that separation is about 55 million kilometers. Picture yourself on a state-of-the-art airplane when suddenly the pilot decides to take a sightseeing detour over Mars. In that case, the journey could extend to around seven years. Even if we opted for a high-tech spacecraft following the most efficient trajectory, landing on our neighboring planet and enjoying a casual visit would still take between six and nine months. What if our goal were to get up close to the sun? Launching a rocket toward the center of the solar system means covering approximately 149.5 million kilometers. The distance defined as one astronomical unit, created specifically for such measurements. That might sound only that much, but it's important to note that light, the fastest thing in the universe, takes about eight minutes and 20 seconds to travel one astronomical unit before reaching Earth. For a friendly visit to Jupiter, you need to cover over 5.2 astronomical units, since the shortest distance between Jupiter and Earth is roughly 588 million kilometers. It's worth remembering that the Juno spacecraft took about four years and 11 months to reach the gas giant and enter its orbit. To get to Neptune, this distant, icy guardian of our solar system, Earth is around 4.3 billion kilometers away, or 30 astronomical units. Although sunlight reaches Neptune in about four hours and 10 minutes, with today's rocket technology, the journey would take decades. For example, Voyager 2 took 12 years to approach Neptune, while the New Horizons mission managed to arrive in approximately eight years. Even though Neptune is the outermost planet in our solar system, there's something beyond it. When we observe our solar system from afar, we see that it is enveloped by a dense cloud of rocks and ice known as the Oort Cloud, a spherical structure composed of frozen objects. It's estimated that the distance from the Oort Cloud to the Sun ranges between 50,000 and 100,000 astronomical units, an unimaginable expanse and a frontier that, with our current technology, we could never cross. If we think of the solar system as our grand home, the Oort Cloud represents its very edge. Once we cross that barrier, we'd be entering a completely unknown, dark, and infinite territory. 
speckled with billions of points of light that serve as beacons, illuminating the way and inviting us to press on. The closest star system to ours, Alpha Centauri, lies about 41 trillion and 300 billion kilometers away, or 276,000 astronomical units from the Sun. To express such vast distances, we also use the light year, which is the distance light travels in one year at roughly 300,000 kilometers per second. One light year amounts to about 9.46 trillion kilometers. Thus, Alpha Centauri is roughly 4.4 light years away, making any journey to that star system utterly unfeasible with today's technology. But why be so pessimistic? Consider the Voyager probe, which travels through space at 17 kilometers per second. If we tried sending it to Alpha Centauri, it would take around 75,000 years to reach its destination. And that's for our closest star. Even if we managed to build a spacecraft capable of speeds approaching that of light, it would still take about 100,000 years to cross the Milky Way. Beyond the confines of the Milky Way, we find that our galaxy is part of what's known as the Local Group, a collection of more than 60 galaxies sprawling across cosmic space in an almost unimaginable way. Light would take roughly 10 million years to traverse this group. The universe, filled with trillions of galaxies and clusters, even allows us to glimpse the Virgo Cluster, a collection of about 2,000 galaxies of various sizes, including our local group. Researchers estimate that the Virgo Cluster spans roughly 15 million light years. That is, even a spacecraft traveling at the speed of light would need 15 million years to cross it. Moreover, to reach a galaxy cluster from our solar system, one would have to cover 53 million light years a concept both truly astounding and a bit intimidating. Leaving the Virgo Cluster, we encounter an even larger structure, the Laniakea Supercluster, a name that literally means immeasurable universe. This vast assembly houses around 100,000 galaxies, including the enigmatic Great Attractor, and spans approximately 520 million light years in diameter. Even though a trip to Mars already seems excessively long, a close look at the map of the observable universe reveals that finding our own galaxy, and within it, Earth, would be an almost impossible task, even with extremely powerful instruments. It is in these moments that we truly grasp the fleeting nature of our existence and how vulnerable we are in the face of such cosmic vastness. So, why can't we measure the total size of the universe? Many researchers argue that the cosmos is infinite and that even if boundaries exist, identifying them is impossible, at least not in the near future. At present, we can only observe a fraction of the universe. If an observer were positioned at the center of the solar system, the visible region would stretch out as a sphere with a diameter of 93 billion light years. Imagine someone in a dark, isolated area on Earth turning on a flashlight from a high vantage point. This is an analogy for what we call the observable universe. Even if objects lie beyond that limit, they remain invisible to us. The grandeur of the universe is largely a consequence of its continuous expansion since the Big Bang, which causes objects to move away from each other at a rate of about 70 kilometers per second per megaparsec. This recession of galaxies is so extreme that reaching them becomes an impossibility. In the face of such immensity, I hope you don't feel discouraged when contemplating our apparent insignificance. I'm convinced that future generations of researchers will discover innovative methods to enable faster and more comfortable space travel, thereby unraveling the mysteries of this vast and astonishing universe. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It's very important. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, I invite you to click the subscribe button below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.